Hey there, in this video we are going to look at some multiple choice solving tips. So unlike questions that require you to perform some calculations and write your own final answer, multiple choice questions usually provide three to five options from which you will choose the correct answer. While multiple options may be or may seem confusing, there is still one important thing to remember. The correct answer is always one of these options. So we're going to look at a few techniques that may help you to increase your success rate with multiple choice questions. You don't necessarily have to use them all. Um, pick, pick and choose the ones that you feel most comfortable with and then try using them when you're solving different practice problems. Elimination is one of the most important principles in solving multiple choice questions. You should always remember that in order to find the correct answer, you don't necessarily have to solve the problem all the way through. If you find enough evidence to eliminate all options except for one, then that last option has to be the correct answer. You can mark it and move on. I also want to remind you that guessing is a good thing to think about since there is always a correct answer. Guessing will instantly give you a one out of three, four, or five chance, depending on how many um, answer choices there are, and getting a correct answer. Even if you're not certain which answer is the correct one, you should always guess as the vast majority of the tests do not have a penalty for wrong answers, only points earned for correct answers. Eliminating some of the options will instantly improve your chances if you are guessing because it will take out some of those options and make it one out of a smaller number of um, choices. So you should use elimination to remove any options even if you do not know how to eliminate all of the options. And then from there, if you need to, you can always guess. Our next technique is a type of elimination. It's called the last digit technique. So first you will perform the required operation on the last digits of the expression. So for example, if we are looking at 56.02 times 48, you're going to take the last digit in each of these numbers and perform the indicated operation. So that would be the multiplication that's between there. And you're going to do two times eight. Two times eight gives us 16. So this tells us that the last digit is going to be the last digit of what you get when you multiply uh, the 2 and the 8 together. So 6 should be our last digit in whatever our correct answer is. So we can eliminate C and D because they don't end in a 6 here at the end. So we know that it's either going to be A or B. And then from there, if you know how to solve the problem, then you would solve it. If not, that's where the guessing, at least now you have a 50-50 shot, a 50% chance of getting it correct if you had to guess, if you weren't sure how to um, solve this. We will also talk about a few other techniques that could even help you eliminate out of A and B beyond the last digit technique. So we'll talk about those here in a second. Our next technique will be the unique element technique. This is a generalization of the last digit technique. So if you encounter a problem in which you can be certain that a specific number or element must be included in your answer, then you can eliminate any other options that do not include that element or that number. So for example, here, if we think about um, adding fractions, we when we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So if you think about getting a common denominator between these numbers. Five cannot be multiplied by a number, a whole number, to give you seven. Same with seven can't be multiplied by a whole number to give you five. So five and seven are not factors of one another. Um, therefore, in order to look at our answer choices, we can think of what our least common denominator would be. And with five and seven, that's going to be five times seven, those two multiplied together. Um, that is our least common denominator or least common multiple. So in that case, five times seven gives us 35, which is our LCM or LCD or least common denominator. So we know that both of these fractions when we change them into having the same denominator are going to have 35 on the bottom. And so that means our final answer is going to have 35 in the denominator as well. So with that being said, we know we can eliminate A and D because um, we have to have that common denominator of 35. That can help us to eliminate um, our answer choices that do not have 35 in the denominator. Once you have them eliminated, then you would go on and either reason through, um, you could guess, you could actually solve it from there. So you have a few options, again, depending on the problem and depending on your comfort level with the problem. Our next 
tactic or technique is estimation. So instead of fully performing complicated calculations, you can round some of the factors to get an estimated outcome. With this outcome, um, you can eliminate options that are too far from a probable answer. So for example, when we have something like 8,945 minus 1,523, I could round this to 9,000 minus 1,500 and subtract those. 9,000 is pretty close to this 8,945. 1,500 is pr pretty close to 1,523. So if I subtract those, I end up with 7,500 or 7,500. And you can see here that if we look at our options, 592 is way too far away from 7,500 because we didn't really round or estimate um, too far from the original numbers to have it be that far away as a correct answer. I would probably even go as far to say that B and C would be too far um, from that 7,500, which would pretty easily put us at D as our answer um, without having to solve, but using estimation as our um, tactic or our technique. Same concept over here, 60.52 times 9.54. If I round this to 60 times 10, those are pretty easy numbers to work with as opposed to these decimals. I could get an estimate and see if I could eliminate answer choices in that way. So if I do 60 times 10, that's going to be 600. So I can pretty easily eliminate C and D. And depending on your comfort level, you may or may not be able to eliminate either A or B, um, depending on, again, how you feel with working with these numbers. Now you did round uh, the 60.52 down and the 9.54 up. So um, A is going to be your answer for this one. But again, you could solve at that point, um, you could actually multiply them out using the long multiplication process, or you could go with the one that is closest to that 600, the 577.3608. Um, that is the correct answer, but for sure, you can eliminate the C and D with this specific technique. Our next technique is called the first digit technique. So this is a form of elimination and a little bit of estimation in there as well. So if you work out the first digits first, you may be able to come to conclusions such as the correct answer must be greater than this number. So. Um, any option that does not meet that criteria can instantly be eliminated. So I could think of this instead as 1200 divided by three. And if I round that to 1200, that's really um, helpful because I can actually just take this 12 and this three and divide those and think about 12 divided by three and only worry about those first numbers and not those zeros there. So that's 12 divided by three is gonna give me four. And then I still have the two zeros on top here. So 400 would actually be the approximate answer. So that's in a way that's that estimating piece. Um, and so that helps me to eliminate B and A because those are, and especially B, those are not close to 400. Um, especially compared to this 416, this 401.16. So um, you also know that if we take 12, 1,248 divided by three, and we change it to 1,200 divided by three to estimate or to round there a little bit, um, this is actually going to be not exactly 400, but I have more on top. So this means that when we take more and divide it by that three, our answer has to be greater than 400 because the actual problem has a larger number up here on top being divided by three. So there's going to be more um, than 400 as our answer. So it does have to be greater than 400. So you can for sure eliminate A um, for that reason along with 311.6 isn't quite as close to 400 as some of these other options. And then obviously the 3,744, while it is greater than 400, the rounding helps us um, to see 1,200 divided by three is 400. That's not going to be a correct answer. So now we're down to C and D, and that can help you um, get down to those two answer choices. And then again, you can either actually evaluate um, or you can use some of those um, divisibility rules. Um, those divisibility rules, remember if we add 
the digits on the top, one, two, four, and eight. If you add those together, eight plus two gives us 10. One plus four gives us five. So together that's 15. 15 is divisible by three. So what that tells us is when the sum of those digits is divisible by three, then the actual number 1,248 is divisible by three. So that would allow us to eliminate um, choice D because we won't have a decimal if it is divisible by that number. So once we eliminate that um, A and B, then we can eliminate D using that set of divisibility rules if you remember those, and then that gives us C as our actual answer. Now, again, as always, you can actually solve the problem. You can set up your long division and do 1,248 divided by three and go through that process, but some of this stuff you can um, look at and you can actually help you eliminate choices without having to calculate, and that'll, that can save you time as well. So just as a quick recap, direct solution, after learning these techniques, it is important to remember that you do not have to eliminate options. At times, the question is not too complicated and you may be able to just solve it. And that is often called the direct solution or directly solving it first and not worry about eliminating. So use the direct solution when you feel confident enough with your knowledge and your skills, or um, it may save you, to, uh, save you time to spend examining the different options. So in summary, we worked with elimination, which had many different techniques underneath of it. So we talked about the last digit technique where we eliminate choices based on the last number in the answer. So multiplying or dividing or adding or subtracting, whatever it may be, those last two digits of the two numbers and using that to eliminate. Unique element technique. This is specific elements that must be included or specific numbers. For example, we had the fractions with five and seven as the denominator, so we knew 35 had to be the denominator in our answer. We can use that to eliminate options. Estimating, so we can round numbers, estimate, and then use that to eliminate. And the first digit technique where we can make conclusion based on those first digits, this is a form of estimating as well. And then the direct solution is always there as an option if you aren't confident in the elimination techniques or if it's a simple problem that can be solved with direct solution maybe quicker than actually eliminating answer choices.